Gaza's health ministry reports that at least 104 Palestinians were killed and 760 injured in an early morning attack by Israeli forces on Gazans awaiting food aid. The aid seekers were struck by artillery, drone missiles and gunfire, overwhelming already strained health facilities. Many are awaiting treatment in under-equipped facilities. A truck delivering food aid turned into an emergency transport for dozens of dead and wounded. Hospitals in northern Gaza like Al-Shifa and Kamal Adwan are overwhelmed, lacking supplies and staff. Hamas has condemned the attack as an unprecedented war crime. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes and shelling claimed at least another 30 lives in the Nusayrat Burej and Khan Yunus camps in Gaza. Additionally, six children in North Gaza died from dehydration and malnutrition with others in critical condition. At least 30,035 people have been killed and 70,457 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7th. In response to ongoing negotiations with Israel, Hamas insists it won't allow allowed diplomacy to cover the enemy's war crimes against Palestinians in Gaza. Meanwhile, Israeli police said it has deployed large numbers at the Nizana crossing to prevent settlers from obstructing humanitarian aid entry. Settlers have been staging demonstrations to block aid in recent weeks. On that note, New Zealand imposed travel bans on Israeli settlers known for committing violent acts, expressing serious concern about the rise in extremist violence. This comes after Israel announced plans for 3,300 new settlement homes in the occupied West Bank. The race for the coveted position of Prime Minister is heating up as the National Assembly Secretariat announces that the election is set for Sunday, March 3rd. Nomination papers can be submitted until 2 p.m. on Saturday, with the scrutiny process taking place on the same day. Shabazz Sharif from PMLN and Umar Ayub Khan from PTI emerge as the key contenders. Moving forward, the National Assembly Secretariat discloses that the nomination papers for the roles of National Assembly Speaker and Deputy Speaker have been accepted. Ayaz Sadiq of PMLN and Amir Droger of PTI are vying for this Speaker position, while Ghulam Mustafa Shah of PPP and PTI back Junaib Akbar will compete for the deputy speaker slot. In a notable development, Ayaz Sadiq shares that his party, along with PPP, IPP and PMLQ, has held discussions with MQMPs Khalik Makbul Siddiqui. Shifting our focus to the recently elected members of the 16th National Assembly, they were sworn in during a session marked by slogans. Outgoing NA Speaker Raja Parvez Afshar administered the oath to 302 members out of a total strength of 336. Notably, the Election Commission of Pakistan is yet to decide on the allocation of reserve seats for the Sunni Ittihad Council. Later, PTI leader Malik Ahmed Dogar criticized parties forming the government based on Forms 47, alleging a stolen mandate. In a symbolic move, PTI backed lawmakers were Imran Khan Mas during the inaugural session of the 16th National Assembly. Meanwhile, in Balochistan, PMLN's Abdul Khalik Ajakzai assumes the position of Assembly Speaker after being elected unopposed. Turning our attention to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Babur Salim Sawati from the Sunni Ittihad Council secured the position of Assembly Speaker. Suraya Bibi, an MPA from Chitral backed by PTI, was elected as the Deputy Speaker, becoming the second woman to hold the post after PTI's Dr. Meher Taj Rogani in 2015. In a stern address, President Putin warned Western nations against deploying troops to Ukraine, cautioning of the looming specter of nuclear conflict. He accused the West of undermining Russia and highlighted the grave consequences of meddling in what he termed as Russia's internal affairs. Putin showcased Russia's modernized nuclear arsenal and its readiness for conflict, emphasizing the potency of its hypersonic weapons. Голословные обвинения, например, в адрес России, что мы якобы собираемся разместить ядерное оружие в космосе. Подобные вбросы, а это не что иное, как вбросы, это э, уловка только для того, чтобы втянуть нас в переговоры на своих условиях, которые выгодны исключительно Соединенным Штатам. При этом они блокируют 
наше предложение, которое лежит у них на столе уже более 15 лет. Имею в виду проект договора о предотвращении размещения оружия в космосе, который мы подготовили еще в 2008 году. Необходимо укрепить группировки на западном стратегическом направлении, чтобы нейтрализовать угрозы, связанные с очередным расширением НАТО на восток, втягиванием в альянс Швеции и Финляндии. Заговорили о возможности отправки на Украину натовских военных контингентов. Но мы помним судьбу, судьбу тех, кто направлял когда-то свои контингенты на территорию нашей страны. Но теперь последствия для возможных интервентов будут гораздо более трагичны. У нас тоже есть оружие, да знают об этом, сейчас только я сказал, тоже есть оружие, которое может поражать цели на их территории. И что все они придумывают сейчас, чем пугают весь мир, что все это реально грозит конфликтом с использованием ядерного оружия, а значит уничтожением цивилизации. А ничего этого не понимают, что ли? Putin also announced plans to bolster troop presence along Russia's western borders in response to neighboring countries joining NATO. He questioned the sincerity of the U.S. in nuclear talks, alleging manipulative tactics aimed at preserving American dominance.